The problem at the core of Beyond Earth is that it suffers from a bit of an identity crisis. Is it an offshoot of contemporary civilization games, or is it a spiritual successor to Alpha Centauri? Is it a game that wants to look at pressing issues that affect our real future, or is this a campy sci-fi romp? Does it want to have the same gallows humor about a vaguely dystopic world that Alpha Centauri offered, or does it want something a little bit more in line with civilization's incessant adulation of all of mankind and our collective achievements? Beyond Earth itself doesn't seem to know, and the result is a game that straddles the line on all of those questions, attempting to always be both and struggling to really achieve either. Mechanically, the vast, vast majority of the game plays like Civilization V. Unfortunately, the mechanics of Civilization, and the ideas they represent, begin to lose their mooring in deep space. For example, Beyond Earth is ostensibly a spin-off of the Civilization franchise, but calling the things you manage in the game a civilization never feels quite right. Civs have, typically, shared culture, history, and values. The word civilization may have its baggage, but it implies at least a loose construct most people can picture to one degree or another. But Beyond Earth has colonies named after their financial sponsors, names of corporations and national allegiances, like the American Reclamation Corporation or the Pan-Asian Cooperative. And it's not clear whether their sense of a unified people comes from earthly nationality, corporate employer, or something else. The game just sort of presupposes it exists. And what would a member of those groups be? Pan-Asian Cooperativites? And unlike Alpha Centauri, the ideological divides that force the different colonies to butt heads don't pre-exist, but get discovered along the course of the game, sort of like religion in previous Civ games. So there's no built-in reason for us to be competing. And most of the game has you fighting the planet just as much, if not more than, the other settlers themselves. So often, especially at the beginning of the game, it feels like everyone are just colonists, and the only differences between your colonies and the others are the colors of the tiles you own and who paid for your trip. Yet these colonies harbor a sense of antagonistic competition that doesn't make sense if these are supposed to be exploratory colonies. They're concerned about their borders being encroached. They have individual cultures with unique identities. They claim planetary resources for their own. They refuse to share scientific breakthroughs. And they even go to war with one another. In short, they operate much like the state-based civilizations of old. Your communities, colonies, civilizations, whatever you want to call them, end up feeling like they have the outward veneer of an enlightened mission of scientific discovery, when really it's just engaging in the same old nation-state-based tribalism on a new battlefield. The vision of humanity on display here really hasn't learned anything since civilization. Nowhere is this felt more profoundly than the game's weirdly mixed messages about resource consumption. The trailer for the game shows the Great Pyramids of Giza in the sea, a New York suffering from gross overpopulation, and smog smothering Rio de Janeiro. We can no longer deny what is clear. Our time on Earth is ending. It feels like someone at Fraxis wanted this to be a game about our relationship with the planet, or that some early draft focused on that a lot more. After all, this is a spiritual successor to Alpha Centauri, a game which probed your personal relationship with the planet. It would make sense for Beyond Earth to carry that theme forward in a different direction. And the game does focus a lot of energy on it. One of the biggest mechanical changes from Civilization V is that the planet itself is one of your biggest enemies. From miasma that chips away at the health of your units to impossibly powerful aliens that can destroy units and even cities, the geography and biology of the planet is one of the primary things on your mind at all times. It really cements the idea that your colonies are on a frontier, where simply making a life of it on the land is its own accomplishment. It asks how you plan to deal with the struggle to survive on and interact with this newfound world first and foremost, and how you're going to deal with your enemies as a secondary consideration. And one of the three new ideology alignment paths, Harmony, is all about embedding yourself into your new ecosystem and becoming a part of it rather than trying to subdue it or turn it into Earth. So there are all these ideas being kicked around about how we ruined Earth for ourselves last time, and how we've got a fresh start on a new planet that we don't even belong on, and whether we can find a better way. The problem is that civilization, as a game, is fundamentally ill-equipped to deal with the problems it skirts with. Global warming, overpopulation, mass pollution, deforestation, these are things that the core mechanics of civilization are sort of designed to promote. The whole idea of civilization is that you keep expanding in all directions and consuming every resource you can until you reach a victory condition. And Beyond Earth does nothing to change that. My Harmony run through the game where we were literally turning humans into part aliens to better fit in with our environment had my capital completely surrounded by mines toward the end. Does this look at all harmonious with the planet? Or does this look like we're back to smog-filled Rio? 
The game opens with us leaving a ruined Earth only to arrive and continue with the same systems that caused the Earth to fall in the first place. Compare this to something like Fate of the World, which is a strategy game about addressing global warming. What makes that game work is that it sees the moral ambiguity of its resources. It sees that industry is both a good thing for stability and economic growth, yet it's also something causing irreparable damage to our atmosphere. We can't just kill industry or economies would suffer and governments would fall and human suffering in general would greatly increase. But we can't let industry run wild to cause harm either. The game is largely about nudging big systems or massaging the relationships between systems to get what you want with minimal damage. But in Beyond Earth, as in Civilization, your resources are nothing but good, and you want nothing but more of them. More money, more research, more people, more, more, more. You hunger for it, you need it. And that's literally the same mindset that got us here. Which would be fine if the game was going for some sort of morbid fatalism, pushing the idea that human beings really are just this virus that brings war and conspicuous consumption on a planetary scale with them wherever they go in the universe. I mean, that sort of stuff forms the basis of most of Fallout's Gallows humor. The end of the world occurred pretty much as we had predicted. Too many humans, not enough space or resources to go around. But bitter dystopias were never in Civilization's wheelhouse. This is a series that loves to adulate just how great we all are. So they don't commit to anything quite that harsh. Instead, we just get an occasional slice of cynical humor that falls flat. We never really address the reality that the endgame of Beyond Earth leaves the planet looking a lot like the one we just left. Instruct the children not to dream of toys or sweets. Instruct them to dream of infrastructure. Those cynical jabs are one place where Alpha Centauri's influences felt really strongly, and it's a little awkward. Alpha Centauri had a sort of dark edge to the whole thing. It was a game that had society divided into drones and talents, which is a wonderfully dystopic way of describing how the colonies in that game ordered their societies. And if drones got a little unruly, you could nerve staple them to stop a riot. It was also a game where every one of the leaders was contemptible in a sort of awesome way, and you would get little quotes from each of them as you discovered new technologies or built new buildings, occasionally highlighting the dark sides of their fanatic ideologies. Like, listen to how the extreme collectivist Chairman Yang talks about what is euphemistically called a recycling center. It is every citizen's final duty to go into the tanks and to become one with all the people. Chairman Shen Jiang, Ethics for Tomorrow. Then listen to how Beyond Earth tries a similar attempt at that sort of cynicism. I love computers because they automate the tedious stuff and give us more time for important things like market manipulation. Do you see how one takes a character's known personality and uses it for humor and the other is just flat? Part of the problem is that the leaders are basically cardboard cutouts this time around. I mean, credit to Fraxis, they have a fairly diverse cast and I have to give a thumbs up for that, but it's a diverse cast of nothing characters. In Civilization, you had the historical context to ground the leaders. You know who Attila the Hun is, and the buffs to mounted units and attacks on city-states make sense. And Alpha Centauri's leaders were caricatures, cartoonish manifestations of their respective ideologies. They were all over the top and completely two-dimensional, but if nothing else, their extreme ideologies made them memorable. But here I struggle just to remember the names of these characters. They're so bland and devoid of personality that one person reads all of the flavor text, even though a lot of it stems from in-universe documentation. We fled Earth because it was getting worse faster than we could fix it. We have neither the historical context of civilization, nor the clever writing and voice acting that made Alpha Centauri's leaders come to life. They're just an icon with some default menu barks. And if I have to hear, no village was ever ruined by trade one more time... No village was ever ruined by trade. No village was ever ruined by trade. No village was ever ruined by trade. But it's not all bad. Perhaps the best aspect of Beyond Earth is its role-playing element. It's certainly more interested in letting you feel like you're guiding a society and the advancement of a people more than civilization has been lately. There are optional quests to carry out that can either provide resources or let you choose how to upgrade your new buildings. For instance, you might find your electric walls are actually operating at better than engineered levels. You might be able to then either risk extending the parameters of your walls for additional defense or redirecting the extra energy towards your credits. And like Alpha Centauri, there are upgrades to your units based on technology letting you sculpt your units to fit your combat style. And your choice of those three ideological alignments are reflected in the way your units and buildings look, and it has consequences for diplomacy when dealing with those factions whose alignments differ from yours. There's actually a fair bit of expressiveness here, and I feel that you can really make an expansionist harmonizing people that have a very different feel to them than a militant society obsessed with supremacy or a trade-heavy group interested in human purity. 
I talked about the slow loss of role-playing in my Civilization video, and if there's one genuine success story to celebrate in Beyond Earth, it's this return to it. This ability to say, you know what, I think our people are really into technology and don't care about the native life. Or, well, these people I'm playing as are going to stay human even if it means we don't research that technology. And avoiding technology is something you can do now. The technology system itself has changed to accommodate this role-playing element, though I'm not sure how I feel about the results. Instead of a linear technology tree like in old Civilization games, technology now has branches and leaves. Unlocking a technology gives you access to the other technologies that branch from it, but also to the child technologies it can produce. Child leaves cost more than branches, and the further from the center you go, the more expensive to research technologies get. The result is that technology is no longer a measure of forward progress. You no longer feel like you're moving from the Bronze Age to the Classical Age, but instead exploring a space of technologies in a way that benefits you and your people. You could go broad but shallow by nabbing a lot of the branch technologies, or focus on deep knowledge of more core ideas. And it's a really cool approach to technology because it lets you roleplay while also sculpting what technologies your people would want or would be interested in having. Or it would be cool if the victory conditions didn't mostly subvert it. So, there are five victory conditions. One is the bog-standard conquest victory of taking everyone else's capitals. You've played this, let's not talk about it. The contact victory consists of reaching out to an alien race, which is sort of this game's economic victory. You need to build multiple wonders and spend a thousand energy to achieve it. But the other three are initially tied to affinity level in the three alignments, and the surest way to raise your affinity level is to research specific technologies. So even though there's this broad, expressive space, you always feel the pressure to march as fast as you can to the technologies that grant you access to whatever win state you're going to go for. Not only that, but by dismantling the linear nature of the tech tree, you no longer have a quick and easy gauge of where everyone is. That comparatively tight game arc I talked about in my Civ video is a lot less structured now. You still have the same phases, but depending on how hard and how fast the AI rushes to its victory conditions, you may find yourself at a game over screen in what feels like the mid-game, because you wanted to build up and slowly go for a harmony victory while some other jerk got lucky with a ruin find and made contact with an alien race first, completely invalidating your entire population because that's how civilization views the way different peoples interact. I don't... whatever. We thought ourselves invincible. We were wrong. So checking the victory condition tracker every couple of turns is a must, and you more or less have to declare war on anyone who looks like they're getting too close to victory before you if you want to win the game. And in fairness, Firaxis recognized that, which is why it's now a big button on the main GUI instead of hidden under a menu like in the other games. It's not that the victory conditions themselves don't work, I like that they're way more unit-oriented now. The Harmony victory requires building an object and defending it for a certain number of turns, the Supremacy victory requires sending your military units back to Earth and leaving yourself vulnerable, and the Purity victory involves setting up immigrants from Earth with new homes during the endgame where space and resources are limited. Having a war when trying to achieve these carries some real consequences and it makes the march to the finish really tense if you're the one going for the victory. But if someone else starts those bits, then it becomes a mad rush to bomb someone you may actually like out of existence before you get a game over. And that's where this pointless competition between peoples thing falls apart for me. You spend so much time fighting the planet itself just to eke out an existence on the edge of space, then go to war because someone else is almost running a successful SETI program. It's not that Beyond Earth is a quote-unquote bad game. It feels a lot like Civ V in that with an expansion or two to flesh it out, it could be a robust entry in the series. If you wanted to play Civilization V with some Alpha Centauri influences or a bit more role-playing, this more than scratches that itch. It's a game about consumption and expansion and conflict, and if running a mighty empire in pursuit of those goals sounds enjoyable, this game offers a wonderful sandbox to do it in. But where Civilization V ignored the downsides of consumption, expansion, and conflict in an attempt to write a love letter to all of human history from the statist worldview of the 20th century, Beyond Earth is just confused, hesitant. It wants the ignorant optimism and progress narrative of its namesake, and the piercing cynicism and occasional insightful commentary of its spiritual ancestor. And it spends so much time trying to figure out if it's an Alpha Centauri game that has civilization in the name, or a civilization game that draws inspiration from Alpha Centauri, that it never makes any effort to find its own identity. 
But in its own way, I think it may have stumbled onto one by accident through its depressing view of the future. A future that has us doing everything we do now, just somewhere else. A future where we carry forward the mistakes of old without thinking about how things could be different, how we could structure societies and economies in more sustainable ways, or ways more free and equitable to its citizens, or to debate what equitable and free societies even are. And it does so by carrying forward old mechanics without thought or criticism. Both thematically and mechanically, this is a game that can't move beyond the shackles of the past.